Hi, everybody, and welcome back. My name is Jean with GuidedByFaithDesigns.com, and this is Guided by Faith Designs, formerly Woodworking and Painting in Faith. Today, we are going to continue our journey working on custom crosses. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna flood our canvas. Now this is gonna be a really good layer to give um, the other layers that we're gonna put on here movement. As you can see, I put the mixture ratios on the screen. I thought that would make it easier for you to just to kinda determine what your ratio should be. And it, it's really gonna be personal preference. These are the mixtures and the thickness that I like. Just remember that the ratio is not gonna be the same across the board for all of your paints. The cobalt blue is a much thicker paint than the Master's Touch acrylics, so it did need a different paint to flow troll to water ratio. And once everything is flooded, I'm gonna pull the two pieces apart because I wanna make sure that paint drops all the way into the center. And then I'm gonna push it back together to give me a good foundation to lay all of my other colors so we can actually start our Dutch pour. And once all of my layers are put down, I'm going to use my air gun um, on a pretty low PSI setting. I think I'm on about 30 PSIs. And um, this is just gonna give me more control over using the hair dryer because it is such a small piece. I will put a link down in the description to the uh, similar compressor and air gun that I am using. So that way, um, if you do want to try this technique, uh, you can check that out down in the description. When using an air gun, uh, you really just want to do nice, slow, continuous uh, movements. You don't want to be pressing the air a lot and doing short spurts like you would with spray paint. Um, as you can see, it's just really nice, long, kind of like brush strokes, but you're using the air gun. Um, right now I have the air gun kind of focused a little bit downwards so I am getting underneath the paint and moving it from the bottom up and around. Um, sometimes depending on what you're looking for you push that air just on the top of your paint just to move the top piece but right now we really want to move that under layer of the blue and so the air is going to be focused more at a downward angle to get underneath the paint and push it outwards. All right, and then once that is done, we are going to go ahead and again, separate the two pieces 
to make sure that all of the paint falls in the center. And this time we're not pushing it all the way back together because we want it to dry separately. And once the cross is dried, this has been about a week, um, MDF dries a lot faster than canvas just because MDF um, is so porous and will soak in some of that water. So it dries fairly fast. Um, I am using Envirotex uh, resin. I get it at Michael's. It is a one-to-one -one ratio. So it's one-to-one -one by volume, not by weight. Mix it up really well. And then I am going to make sure I coat the sides really well. Um, get those nice and saturated, and then I will coat the tops and just do a nice flood. After the resin is fully cured, which is about 48 hours, Envirotex actually cures um, in 24, but I like to leave it at 48. We're going to remove the resin drips from the back of the cross. Easiest way to do that is I just take my heat gun. Make sure you wear a respirator when you're doing this or a mask because um, resin fumes as they heat up are toxic. And I just heat the um, resin drips until they're nice and warm and then just use an X-Acto knife to scrape across the bottom of them and scrape this off. And we will do this all the way around the cross. That's gonna give us a nice, flat, even base. And after I'm done removing all of the drips, I'm gonna go ahead and do a really good sanding. I'm using 220 grit sandpaper, making sure I get that inside um, ledge where the cross is joined together and make that as flat as possible. And then I will also go around the outside and make sure I get any rough spots. When you are putting resin on MDF, especially on the edges, it can become very rough. And so make sure that you do a really good sanding and then I also did a light sanding on the top as well. And here we're just going to join the two pieces together. Now I did not lift up this cross to do this resin coating simply because I wanted them to fit together nice and snugly. And sometimes when you lift them up to join pieces together, um, they don't go together very well. So it's just a flat surface with some plastic underneath. Um, I would rather have to deal with a little bit of resin ledging on the back end of it than having an uneven cross at the end. Once I join the pieces together, I am again just going to do another coat, making sure to pay attention to my sides and doing another full uh, coat on the top and sealing it all together as one piece. And also before I did this resin layer, I cleaned the entire cross with just some denatured alcohol and a paper towel to make sure it was free from any impurities. And once that's done, just hitting it really quickly with the torch to pop any bubbles so we have a nice glass finish. All right, and one of the um, last steps is going to be just sanding the back of it. I am using a rotating disc sander and 220 grit sandpaper. I am out in my shop wearing a mask just because resin and MDF particles can be toxic. So make sure that you protect yourself. And I have a towel down just to protect the front of the cross so I don't get any scratches or anything damaged on the resin so I don't have to do another coat. After this, we are going to paint the back of the cross. I'm gonna clean everything up with alcohol really well. And then we are going to do a coat of black paint. I ended up doing three coats 
just to make sure I seal in um, the back really well. Whenever painting um, the back like this, always paint from the inside out, which means you're basically your brush strokes are going to go from the cross off of the cross, as you can see. Um, and this way you don't get any paint drips or anything like that on the outside and um, you're going to have a nice clean finish. All right, everybody, we are all done. Thank you for very much for joining me today. This cross is very near and dear to my heart. It is actually a representation of the bond and the love between my dad and I. Um, he passed away in 2021. And so I am on the left side of this cross and he is on the right. And this one will actually hang next to the painting that I did in honor of my father after he passed away called Well Done. And it has very similar blues and blacks and white tones in it. So very near and dear to my heart. Um, I am so blessed to be able to share this journey with you. And thank you again for joining us today. Um, I hope that you have been inspired to create and that you always find joy in the process. Remember, our creativity is a gift from God and that we can always use it to glorify Him and to bless others. Please consider subscribing to the channel. Don't forget to hit that little notification button so you can be notified of our new content. Um, we upload every Saturday at 9 a.m. And also stay tuned at the end um, for today's devotional and reflection. And remember, as we continue on this journey together, let us always remember to keep our hearts and our minds focused on God and seek His wisdom and His guidance in all that we do. Thank you for being a part of our beautiful and wonderful community. And as I look forward to seeing you again soon, God bless.